So we're going to use the idea of an equilibrium constant to help us define this condition of equilibrium. So what are equilibrium constants and what are we supposed to learn from them? So to write the equilibrium constant expression, we will use the letter K. K is the equilibrium constant. It's a capital K, unlike the lowercase k from a rate constant. And we'll write K as the ratio of the products to the reactants when the mixture reaches equilibrium, when those concentrations or pressures are no longer changing. We can write the, the values for products and reactants either as concentrations or as partial pressures. And it just depends on what kind of data we have for our system. We're going to use the stoichiometric coefficients as the exponents for the concentrations or pressures of each product and each reactant. And we need to note that the written direction of the reaction matters. We said before that the products could react to become reactants, but uh, for consistency, we all need to agree which things we're defining as reactants and put those in the denominator, and which things we're defining as products and put those things in the numerator. In our equilibrium constant expression, we'll have only gases or solutions. The uh, concentrations or pressures of solids or pure liquids are not included. And the reason for that is that gases and solutions, they can have their concentrations change. For solutions, you've experienced this before in, in the lab, um, but for gases, think about how you can compress a gas and therefore make its concentration be different, its moles per liter. Liquids and solids, on the other hand, have basically constant concentration. You can't change the concentration of a pure liquid. It just, it just is that liquid. So for that reason, those uh, liquids and solids don't appear in the equilibrium constant expression. So what does that value of K tell us about a reaction? K, the equilibrium constant, defines the ratio of the concentrations or the partial pressures at equilibrium. Those concentrations and pressures, they don't have to be equal. We just know that there are some reactants and some products at equilibrium, and this K constant defines their ratio. The size of K will tell us about whether the equilibrium mixture is mostly reactants, mostly products, or somewhere in between. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The equilibrium constant is unitless. It's always unitless, no matter what the units of the concentrations or pressures that we use to calculate it. The reasons for this end up being kind of complicated, but if you're really interested, you can become a chemistry major and take Chem 361, Thermodynamics and Kinetics. The equilibrium constant K is constant for a given reaction at a given temperature. If you change the temperature, you're going to change the value of the equilibrium constant. It's, it is uh, also constant no matter what concentrations you use, the value doesn't change. So we have different ways of writing K. We can write it as a ratio of the rate constants of the forward and the reverse reactions. And that stems from the fact that we said that at equilibrium, the rate forward equals the rate reversed. And so we know that the rate is going to be dependent on both the rate constant and the concentrations. And we can write the value of K, we can define that ratio uh, by using the rate constant forward and reverse. We can, and more familiarly, well, so what, what we'll do more is to write it as a ratio of the product and reactant concentrations. So if we write it as concentrations, we, you know, for our sort of hypothetical reaction here that A plus B goes to C plus D, we'll write it as the concentrations of the products and the reactants raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So here we can use stoichiometric coefficients. If we have pressure data for gases, we'll do the same thing, but using partial pressures raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. If we write this as a with concentrations, we'll often define this as Kc, whereas for pressure, we'll define the value of the rate constant as Kp. And in some circumstances, Kc and Kp have different values, and we can interconvert between those values using this variation on the ideal gas law that Kp equals Kc 
times RT to the power of delta N, where delta N is the change in the number of moles of gas from the products to the reactor, or the reactants to the product side. So the change in moles of gas. So let's do some practice. Let's write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. We said that K, the equilibrium constant expression, can be written as the ratio of the concentrations of products over reactants. So we'll start with the concentration of our products, so ClF3, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient, which is a 2. And we'll divide by the concentration of our products, so fluorine raised to the power of 3, and chlorine raised to the power of 1. Now this K would be the Kc, since it's written in terms of concentrations. We can do the same thing with pressures, where instead we'll write this as the partial pressure of ClF3 squared divided by the partial pressure of F2 to the third power times the partial pressure of Cl2 to the first power. Now here's the same reaction, but this time we have some partial pressure data that were measured at, at uh, for an equilibrium mixture at a particular temperature. So basically we mixed all these things up, let it go to equilibrium, and this is the, the reaction that we ended up with. So let's calculate the value of the equilibrium constant Kp at this temperature. We said before that our equilibrium constant expression Kp was the partial pressure of the reactants divided by the partial pressure of the products. And so we, in order to calculate the value of Kp, we can use the observed pressures for an equilibrium mixture. It's important that this mixture is at equilibrium. But so we have 1.4 atmospheres of the products squared divided by 0.5 atmospheres of F2, that'll be raised to the third power, and uh, 0.25 atmospheres of chlorine raised to the first power. And so if you do the calculation there, you'll get that the value of Kp equals 63. And remember, Kp has no units. Even though the, all those atmosphere units wouldn't necessarily cancel out, doesn't matter. Kp doesn't have units. Okay, so we said that Kp for this reaction at this temperature is 63. Can you calculate Kc? So we said that calculating Kc from Kp, we're going to use this formula that Kp equals Kc times Rt to the delta n. This formula actually so it is, comes from the ideal gas law that you learned in Chem 31 that relates concentration and moles. Or sorry, moles and pressure. So uh, if we want to solve for Kc here, we're going to rearrange this so that we have Kp divided by Rt to the delta n. And then we can start filling in our quantities. So we said that Kp here is 63. The R we're going to use is the R for atmospheres, since our pressures were in atmospheres, 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin times the temperature, which we said is 100 K. And we're going to raise all of that to the power of delta N. So we said that delta N is going to be the uh, moles final minus moles initial, or moles of gas on the product side, minus moles of gas on the reactant side. And so here, we on the product side, we have two moles of gas, and we have four moles of gas, three, F, uh, three fluorines and one chlorine, on the uh, reactant side. So that will give us a delta N of negative two. All right, if you do that calculation, you'll get that the value of Kc is 4,200 to two significant figures. So what does that number K mean? What does it tell us? The magnitude of K tells us how far toward the products or the reactant side the equilibrium mixture ends up being. K can have a lot of different values. K can be really, really small, like 10 to the negative 100. And K can be really, really large, so it can be like 10 to the power of 100. And it can be in between, it can be close to 1. 
And so if k is really small, like less than 10 to the minus 3, then we would say that the reaction is reaction mixture is mostly reactants at equilibrium, and the reaction hardly proceeds toward products at all. If k is really large, so say bigger than 10 to the third, then we would say that the reaction mixture is mostly products, and that the reaction proceeds to completion. And then in between, between about 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the 3, we would say that there are appreciable concentrations of both reactants and products at equilibrium. Now these 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the 3, these are not hard and fast, right? Instead, this is kind of a general guideline since this is a spectrum. We would say that in this range, we can expect to find appreciable or measurable concentrations of both reactants and products. So let's interpret this reaction we found that Kp is 63. Would you say that this reaction mixture consists of mostly reactants, mostly products, or in between? We would say that this, uh, because Kp is between 10 to the minus 3 and uh, 10 to the 3, uh, whoops, change those change those signs, um, we would say that, that we have appreciable concentrations of both reactants and products. Appreciable of reactants and products. So we have a mixture of reactants and products at equilibrium for this reaction.